Every time you look on the television or listen to the radio and even go to the movies, they don't want you to see, hear or feel anything positive coming out of Negroid artists that are teaching about self-love. Instead they want you to desire to be lighter or whiter. In so desiring you then proceed to mix your seed until generations down the line your children aren't even noticeably Negroid. You see principalities in high places have created this so-called market. And if you take the word market what do you see? Mar equals Ram, Ket equals a package, Market or Market, or the Mark of the Beast. The spell worked in reverse on Negroids. It worked against them. He bred a generation of children that became criminals with the attitude I'm just gonna take mine, I'm down with OPP, other people's property. He bred animals reversing back to the state of Homo erectus, ape-like man, which was the state of man before the intervention of the Elohim. The spell made the children mad, which if you put it in reverse or dyslexia, it's what? Damn, which is the phonetics of the word damn, it's the same thing, meaning doomed, damned meaning to bring about the failure of, ruin. To condemn is harmful, illegal, or immoral, to condemn to everlasting punishment or a similar fate, doom. To swear at. To swear, curse. Used to express anger, irritation, contempt, or disappointment. The saying of damn is a curse. The least valuable bit, a jot, in 1983 AD, he introduced to the children the curse, damn, to take them out of mainstream America. You see it every day as you walk the streets. Children with their pants sagging down past their behind, back hunched all over. Their bodies became trained to walk in that manner. So even if you put a suit on them they won't know how to walk straight with it on anyway. Not only do they try to destroy the Negroid people, they try to destroy any organization that might be trying to help, because when they see organizations such as the Holy Tabernacle Ministries, the Ancient Egyptian Order or the Egyptian Church of Karast Christ they call it a cult or fanatical religious group. When a medal should be given, persecution is given instead. Especially when you try to save the youth, when you take kids off the street, and change the way the children think and feel because they have fallen to a lowly state. You can see it in the way they walk, the way they talk, the way they dress and the way they act. Satan tries to destroy them. Nothing is being done to help these kids or their future generations, that's why this scroll is necessary. Their only concern is to stop anyone who might be able to lift the evil hypnotic sleep spell, called Leviathan and Kingu in Sumerian writing that was cast 6,000 years ago by Lucifer the Devil or Zuin in Sumerian writings. You were given 6,000 years to be under the spell, so the people who assist the Luciferians cannot take a chance on who the Savior might be, which would deem the end of their world. They tried to do it to Yeshua, of 2000 years ago and will not hesitate to do it again, by any means necessary. The same principalities that existed then, when the wise men proclaimed the birth of the Savior, still exist to this day and they wait patiently to consume him. His coming can be related to a quote in the book of Revelation. Revelation 12 4, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. The dragon lays and waits for the birth of the Savior to consume or prevent him from saving his people when he is born. This should be obvious to the world by now because anyone who proclaims to be a Savior and is able to control the minds of a vast majority of people, they want to eliminate. So if a Savior is born unto a people he becomes the subject of slander and defamation. They have their own methodology of dealing with them and it never changes. First, they character assassinate you, and then they kill you. Remember their job is to prevent the return of the Savior by any means. Most importantly when he comes, they want you to miss him like you did the first time he came. The devil doesn't want you to receive him in hopes of we as Negroids losing the covenant. Don't you see they don't want you to know that Yeshua, is black with kingly hair and burnt brass skin. They want you to expect a Caucasoid as the savior so that you will reject the Negroid as one. In so doing you will not be prepared for the wedding and lose your inheritance as an heir to the kingdom of the Elohim. Character assassination is when your moral and ethical structure is attacked and destroyed through the media because the media is a very powerful tool that can reach millions of people in a few seconds. They have the advantage of spreading their lies before your side of the story gets out. They take a little truth, switch it around and add on or take away from it. However, they pick and choose what to tell, which makes it a lie. Everyone tends to think that just because it's on television, keep in mind a source that tell lies visually, it is most definitely the truth. You know the saying believe half of what you see and none of what you hear they are talking about the media. They subconsciously stamp their thoughts into your mind. Thus, they have you under control. So when you hear the victim's side of the real story, you are doubtful because they have already put their version of what happened in your head. Anything that appears on television is not by chance, it is a well thought out plan. In turn, they give much media play to groups like the NOI. Nation of Islam, under Minister Louis Farrakhan, who stepped down as the leader of the Nation of Islam. 
The fact that Farrakhan stepped down confirms that the Holy Tablets is the Book of Lamb prophesied by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. In the past, Farrakhan said he was coming with the Book of Lamb, now he has stepped down. So the Holy Tablets must be the Book of Lamb, and I, Dr. Malachi Z. York, as Syed, Isa al-Hadi al-Mahdi, the Master Teacher must be that man the Messenger Elijah Muhammad told his followers to look for and follow. As one of my most well-known sayings goes, no one wins the race in racism. Farrakhan is still a great man. He worked very hard to save the nation of Islam. May he be forever blessed. The real Saudi Arabians are the true descendants of Abraham and Hagar, through their son Ishmael, and Hagar bare Abram a son, and Abram called his son's name, which Hagar bare, Ishmael. Genesis 16:15. Through Ishmael's second son Kadar, these are their generations, the firstborn of Ishmael, Neviot, then Kadar, and Adbiel, and Mibsam, 1 Chronicles 1:29. Kadar comes from the Hebrew word Kadar meaning black and heavily and dark-skinned. Kadar, who was the father of the original black Arabs, genealogy, history and names, has proven them to be Negroid. The present representation of Arabs is not true, due to many foreigners having mixed their seed in with these Moor, which stems from the Latin word Moreno, which means black. The word Moor is sometimes spelled from the French Mar, both coming from the ancient Romans and Greek Moors produce mulattoes, a person of mixed white and black ancestry, you see them as Arabs today. Due to all of these terrorist attacks by so-called Arabs, the biblical Arab is getting a bad name. Abraham was a Chaldean, and his seed that can be found through Ishmael and Kadar are known as Bedouin, a word meaning wanderers, which is the same meaning for the word Arab Araba, which means moving about. In reality most of the world does not know what a real Arab looks like. They are not like the people that you see in the media today, demons like Osama bin Laden. They are not Arabs, and should not be referred to as Arabs. For example, Osama bin Laden, who is originally from the country now being called Saudi Arabia, that was originally called Al Gore, which wasn't called Arabia until the year 1926 AD, when Abdul Aziz ibn Saud declared himself king, but not without first getting permission from the Caucasoids of Britain in a letter in hopes not to offend them by making a decision of his own. So, with their permission, he renamed it Saudi Arabia after himself. Now back to the point. Osama bin Laden is not an Arab, he is a Saudi, an East Indian who conquered that land and set themselves up as Arabs. Also, demons like Saddam Hussein who is in Iraq, originally the land of Babylon, should not be called an Arab, he is really an Ottoman Turk, because Iraq fell to the Ottoman Turks in the 16th century, making him Turkish. So, while the media groups want to clump all these different nationalities together as Arabs, they should really look at each individual and the country they are from, and realize that none of them are original Arabs. Let me explain further. Each of the countries and people that are being portrayed as Arabs today, are countries that were invaded by different nationalities, which were mostly Indo-Europeans, and they mixed in. They are not from the pure seed of Abraham. The people whom you see as Arabs today are not the original Arabs, and can't really understand or speak the Arabic language. They don't know anything about them, or what the Nobles Quran teaches because they are too busy following Hadith and Sunnah, which are words and traditions of men not from the Alihat gods, judges, angels. Muhammad, the prophet who the Nobles Quran was revealed to, told his followers to read everything and study everything. But today the rules of Islam teach people the contrary, do not read everything, or anything, and especially not the Holy Bible. Then it is also frightening to note how many Muslims are illiterate, who really cannot read or understand their own holy book, the Nobles Quran, for as I said, 90% of the Muslim world are non-Arabic speaking. If you study the history of each country associated with Arabs, you will see that none of them are the original Arabs. For example, after the 7th century BC, the Turks conquered Egypt, so the people you see in Egypt today are not Arabs, they are Turks and they don't speak Arabic, they speak Turkish Arabic, a poor dialect. Their dialect is far from the Arabic in the Nobles Quran. When you look at Algerians, you are really looking at the French, Italians, French and the Spanish who invaded Tunisia, so the people you see in Tunisia are really a mixture of all three. They are not Arabs. The following people who inhabit these lands are fakes, not being of the real pure seed of Abraham. The Iranians, Iraqis, Libyans, Lebanese, Phoenicians are not Arabs. The inhabitants of Qatar, Saudis, Turks, Emirates, Bangladeshis, Malaysians, Indonesians, Moroccans, and Mauritanians are not Arabs. Algerians, Syrians, Bahrains, Egyptians, Yemenites, Kuwaitis, are not Arabs. This is a mass deception, a cover-up of genocide used to overtake a people, their names, land, culture and God and then to scatter them across the earth leaving them in a state of amnesia, the Hebrew words am, nation and nesya, 
of forgetful mortals, which means a forgetful state. So most Negroids don't know they are the pure seed from the Anunnaki, who perfected Seth, the third son of Adam and Eve, to his first son Enoch who Noah descended from, to Abraham, to Kadar the son of Ishmael. These are the true Arabs. They bury the facts that the real descendants of the Prophet Muhammad, were Negroids, the Fatimites, in Sudan, today known as the Dongolaway, that were chased out of Arabia into Egypt, and down into Sudan by the Abbasides, Haliya, Khatmiya, also called Abbasid, which is an Arabian dynasty, 750 to 1258 AD, that expanded the Muslim Empire. It was named after as Syed al-Abbas, 568 to 654 AD, the paternal uncle of the Prophet Muhammad, who are also Negroids called the tribe Jalian today in Sudan. Al-Abbas is one of the sons of as Syed Abdul Muttalib, 496 to 578 AD, as Syed al-Abbas was of the Quraysh Meccans tribe originally named Amir called Hashemites, assassins, of which Hashem, 464 to 546 AD, and his wife, Salma, birthed Abdul Muttalib, father of Abdullah father of Muhammad. Hashim was the uncle of Umaway, according to the Dictionary of Islam by Thomas Patrick Hughes, the title then passed to Abu Abbas, the fourth in descent from Al-Abbas, the uncle of Muhammad. These Umayyads, Abbasides ruled over Egypt but were eventually overthrown by the Ayyubids and Mamluks under Salahuddin in 1171 AD. The Abbasides consisted of Turkish, Kurdish and Circassian, which means the original people of Arabia were black Arabs not like the ruling family, Fahd who are a mixture Indo-Aryan people. True Saudi Arabians are not the original Arabs, they are Indo-Aryans. You can look at W.D. Ford and see he's not a Saudi Arabian. If you stuck Farad in the middle of King Saud and a British person, you can see he's not a Saudi Arabian. You may ask why would these facts be hidden? Well, because all these Indo-Europeans or Spaniards conquered original lands and took control of people by mixing in with their blood to phase them out, or they did it by genocide. Then they claimed the identities and religions of the group of people they conquered. Just as today, you find Caucasoids claiming to be Native Americans or American Indians, because they conquered the original Negroids called Olmecs who were in America first. The modern Native Americans mix their blood with the Olmecs who had mixed their blood with the Chinese who migrated under Hu Shen, and now are calling themselves American Indians dressing like Native Americans, wearing braids and beads and attending powwows. These same people were conquerors and murderers of true Native Americans who were also Negroids. I need to educate people about the facts. This world has not come to this lowly state by chance, it hasn't regressed by mere fate. The things that determine the state and conditions on this planet were carefully orchestrated. Take for instance, gang violence. Why do you think it exists? Why do you think it comes and goes? One moment the kids are leaving home to join their fellow gang members the next minute you don't hear a word. Why? First ask yourself is the thug life or gangs affecting our lives, or anyone else's life for that matter? You see principalities in high places realize that if their plan was carefully orchestrated and executed properly, it would inevitably be a success. Thus, gang warfare was born and carefully planned at SRI, Stanford Research Institute. A shock and devastation to society, gang war was in effect by the year 1958 AD. At that time, about 200 gangs existed. You first saw it in West Side Story, the musical with the actress Natalie Wood. Then in the year 1966 AD, the year of the birth of the Antichrist, 666, gangs disappeared. They reappeared in East LA, Los Angeles. In 1989 AD, gangs came back on the scene. Crack houses and prostitution escalated. If you were a threat, you got slaughtered. Just look at the new movies that came out as if by chance like, Colors, Juice, Black Panthers, Clockers, Boys in the Hood, Dangerous Minds, Jason's Lyric, New Jack City, Menace to Society, and South Central, just to name a few. There were three phases to this carefully orchestrated plan. 1. Identification failure when the targeted group failed to identify the source of the crisis. 2. Fragmentation, that's when people feel happy that they're not in areas where gangs are, even though the social order of the communities broke down anyway. 3. Maladaptation process, the period of disassociation, communities broke away from the rest of the communities that were infested by gangs in order to defend themselves. Mainly because they could not relate to what was happening, they could not identify with it. Now it's worse than ever. When will organizations such as these let the world rest? Never. This is all a part of the one world government, one world order. The spell of Leviathan. They all go hand in hand. Why you ask? They don't want you to feel safe in your home or on the streets. This is how insecurity is generated. They also want you to see that society in itself is helpless, especially when this kind of violence exists. 
Not to mention that these principalities in high places want you to realize how much your social order is collapsing. Just as fast as gangs came in, they will go out. It's a master plan, one you don't have anything to do with. Just as I said before, they plan a plan, but Al Yunel, most high god is the best of planners. It's funny, well in actuality it's not funny at all. I say that because I know that this is not all they have in store for you. The one world order is real and time is growing shorter. And it frightens me to think that I've been teaching this for over 30 years and it seems as if you're still not listening, like you just don't grasp what I'm telling you. I have a lot of followers and I'll have that many more by next year. I just hope you're ready. See Satan, lurks, he crouches at the door, and if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Genesis 4-7, waiting for a chance to get on your back, and you let him every time. You fight each other, you fight me and I have the information. You join stupid gangs, and you kill each other. Black on black crime is escalating. Don't fool yourselves into thinking that the masses want to hear the truth. As says in Matthew 22:14, many are called, but few are chosen. What you don't realize is the evil malevolent beings, the reptilians, the luciferians, nakeshites, and demons or whatever name you want to call them, made a vow, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Genesis 3:15. between the devil's seed and the woman's seed there shall be a deep hatred. So, Satan hates you and is going to do everything to destroy you. Do you remember the story I told a long time ago? The devil wanted to make you think you have time. Well you don't, time is running out. You see, he realized that Negroids were progressing too fast. Negroids had too many doctors, nurses, lawyers, and firemen among them. We joined the military, and Negroids were elected into Congress, and ran for the presidency's seat and running the president's office as chief of staff members. The appointment of Negroids in key diplomatic positions in the Bush administration is the recognition of a gift from the Elohim for negotiation. After the events of 9-11, in 2002 a most dangerous year for security, a black man was placed as the head of Super Bowl security. At the same time, we see Condoleezza Rice and General Colin Powell in charge of foreign affairs during wartime. This is because whites don't know how to communicate, to negotiate, they are arrogant and condescending. When international problems came up for the United States, Rev. Jesse L. Jackson served as an unofficial ambassador of the United States, Rev. Dr. Martin Luther King bred Rev. Jackson as he too was a master communicator. If it hadn't been for Dr. King calling for calmness after the death of Malcolm X, when people were ready to combat, the streets would have been running with blood. This capacity to communicate is seen in Negroid politicians, activists, writers, artists, entertainers and athletes and has made them beloved and successful worldwide. The devil recognizes this and has set out to stop it. We were getting into mainstream. Negroids were all over. He let a few Negroids in, and then he closed the door. Just like there are Negroids who are mayors and government officials and good people like, Mayor Shirley Franklin of Atlanta, Congresswoman Maxine Waters and former Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney and the list can go on and on. Even with more prominent Negroids than that, they enforce the spell. This is the evil hypnotic spell that caused you to be mentally incapable of thinking. You have been, and are being brainwashed. Media is one of the strongest tools which the Canaanites have developed to lead you astray. Media is defined as a means of communication such as, television, tell lies visually, newspapers, magazines, comic books, advertisements, radio, movies, skywriting, and broadcasting. Communication is the process of transmitting messages from a source through a channel. In America, there are basic functions of the media. They are, one, to serve the economic system, two, to entertain, three, to inform and four, to influence. The devil has the media monopolized. All this is done to seduce you, the Negroids, while he is still making a profit. The object of mass communication is to change the diet of most people, you choose one to suit your taste. You can use it for fun, for information, for reassurance, for passing time and for guidance. This is a substitute for the Negroid man, instead of turning to their families for passing time, or reading the Holy Bible, the Nobles Quran, or the Holy Tablets, for information that will give reassurance, and for praising the Elohim, Most High God. You would rather turn on the television. In the first place, there are no real Negroid programs on the air for you to watch. BET, Black Entertainment Television, is owned by VH1, Video Hits 1. The Caucasoids write what the Negroids say, word for word on all so-called black shows. Just look at what happened. A lot of young Negroid producers like Spike Lee, 
Damon Wayans, Mario Van Peebles, Eddie Murphy, Robert Townsend, John Singleton, the Hudlin brothers, the Hughes brothers, Forrest Whitaker, and Carl Clay just to name a few, are all controlled by the Canaanites who decide which movies get released to the public. They also edit the dialogue, the scripts, the actors, and actresses that they select and as you can see once they see good Negroid actors and actresses, they steal them and they start giving them parts in movies with an all Canaanite cast, and they won't work for the independent Nubian producers, people like Lawrence Fishburne, or Halle Berry. They have become controlled. It's sad. You see it happen right in front of your face these days and we saw it happen before in the 60s and 70s with Shaft, Uptown Saturday Night, Cleopatra Jones, Across 110th Street, Blackula, JT's Revenge, Brother John, Claudine, just to mention a few. The same old Satan, is up to the same old tricks, trying to keep Negroids down. Take a look at all the original cast members of Saturday Night Live, they are all Canaanites, with Dan Aykroyd, Chevy Chase, Bill Murray, John Belushi, Gilda Rodner, and Garrett Morris, a Negroid. Just think. You had to think really hard to remember him. All of these actors have been made big stars, but where is Garrett Morris? Now look at the original cast of In Living Color, Keenan Ivory Wayans, Kim Wayans, Kim Coles, Sean Wayans, David Allen Greer, Tommy Davidson, Jamie Foxx, and the Canaanite Jim Carrey. They were mostly all Negroids. Look how they took and made the Canaanite Jim Carrey a star and pushed back all of the Negroids. They are nowhere near as successful as Jim Carrey. Now, you tell me that's not racism. In pizza stores, they let them fly an Italian flag, during the Chinese New Year, they fly China's flag, in a kosher deli they fly a Jewish flag, on St. Patrick's Day, they can wear green and fly the flag of Ireland. But they have a problem when they see the flag of Negroids, the Mahdi's flag, the black, red, and green flag. This flag was introduced to blacks in America by Muhammad Du Ali, Nubian from Egypt who gave it to Marcus Garvey as the black, red, and green, which was later changed to red, black, and green. This black, red, and green flag with the spear and crescent was the flag the kidnapped Negroids, slaves, brought here and can be found in the British Museum archives as well as in the archive of Washington, D.C. But when and if we fly it, it's called a revolutionary flag not a nationality flag like all others. Make note of this, Italian American, Polish American, Irish American, Jewish American, French American and finally, the American Negroid. Notice in every other case American is second. You are the footstool of America, you and the American Indians, often mistakenly called Native Americans. You, Negroids, are the Native Americans. That's blatant racism today. Americans do the same thing to Negroids, denoting that all Negroids are from the same not allowing you to be classified as anything else. Notice how they give themselves a nationality, if you dare, just call them all whitey. As said before, not having a nationality is what makes you their footstool. From now on, when you meet anybody, ask them their nationality. Don't let them say American, whether white or black ask, what is your nationality? Keep in mind, the only way you can be an American is if you are Native American or an American Indian. Notice how it will shake them up. Ask the Irish, if you are American, why do you still celebrate St. Patrick's Day on March 17th? And if you love Ireland and Irish culture enough to still celebrate its holidays, why don't you go back to Ireland? If you are American, take that Irish flag down and fly the flag of the United States of America. If that is what you are. In the media you're watching the Caucasoid and his idea of entertainment, with Negroid faces, what he thinks we look like, how he thinks we live our lives etc. Subliminal seduction goes hand in hand with the media, because this leads you astray by way of the subconscious mind. Just by looking at the commercials, you are constantly being exposed to materialistic items, which seduce you into buying them. It seduces you into really believing that you need it, that is what Satan has to offer. The devil even uses sexually suggestive images in order to promote lustful thoughts in the viewer. Lust and lies are the tools of Satan. The devil shows you sexy women advertising expensive cars, and other luxurious items, just to get you to buy his perfumes, soaps, detergents, or any other item he may put on the market. In actuality, the disagreeable, evil, malevolent, reptilian, devil, demons are brainwashing you while you and your children sit as victims in front of the television. It's called subliminal seduction, and there are books that you can go to and do some research on the subject. Do you realize that by your children viewing cartoons, they are being groomed to believe everything the Caucasoid shows them on television and in the movies? Cartoons are some of the most violent programs. Children learn from everything they see, their parents, schools, other children, and the media. Violence is so widely seen that it seems to be the norm. The children see this and imitate it, therefore, they grow up very aggressive and hostile. 
I want you to think of your own list of what you see on TV. The evil reptilian is destroying your natural need to seek a higher force, which is the most high God. Satan is trying to destroy the existence of the creator through media. Why haven't you ever seen one character on television or in a movie praying or asking the creator for help? How often do you see the television characters going to a church, masjid, synagogue, or temple? A behavioral pattern is something that is learned. Thus, children learn from what they see and hear. A majority of their education is derived from the television. Have you ever wondered what type of people your children watch? It has been recorded in well-known periodicals that some of your favorite television personalities are devil worshippers. Your entire life revolves around the media. When you wake up in the morning, you turn on the radio or the television. Then while on your way to work, you buy the newspaper, which only consists of who's been shot or mugged, and how high the prices are rising. This continues throughout your everyday life with billboard advertisement signs and even down to the clothing people wear with the devil's image all over it, his name or one of his mottos. Finally, when you come home, you still turn on the radio or television set and this takes you straight to bed. You are constantly being stimulated and bombarded with this subliminal seduction that you never get a chance to see how much you don't need him. The media is a monopoly, and they all work together. They only let you see, hear, or read what Satan wants you to see, hear, or read. The sad part about it is this, you are becoming extinct and you don't know what's going on. Wake up. You are still under the spell of Leviathan. And now they're enforcing the spell through music. Music has been a part of man's life since the beginning of time. The universe was created through harmonics. In the original Asherah Syriac, Galilean, language, music has several meanings, depending on its use. Muusiki is defined as Mu, one who is or does, and it finds its roots in Wasaka, which means to gather together. Relative to this meaning, all over the world music was used among other things as a means to bring people together for various reasons, weddings, births, funerals, etc. Another Asherah Syriac word Tara means to make music for a purpose. Tara also means, to wander, from the road. Therefore, these two words should tell you that music can take you off your course, make you wander from the road of al Yunel. It has been the plan of the Caucasoid to keep Negroids ignorant in regard to all things since the Negroid was enslaved. While in a state of bondage, Negroids made a scientific and mathematical structure behind jazz, which is one of the most creative types of music. This accomplishment amazed the Caucasoid because Negroids had little or no education during this era. This gift was bestowed upon us by al Yunel. The Caucasoid is aware that he is physically bound and that his music has no spiritual influence. Thus, he has found Negroid writers to sell their souls for money and write his songs. All this is to give his music a spiritual feeling. The Caucasoid could never inject this quality into his music. The devil has played a large part in gaining the secrets of Negroid music. Many Negroids have become so caught up in the Caucasoid's world that they assist in delivering you up to him. Helping him create music to seduce you. Acting like him so more Negroids desire what he has. You all have been possessed by his greed for material gain, and actually sold your souls for this. Music has taken many changes since jazz. The Caucasoid devil has very successfully used modern technology to cover up his lack of soul and spiritual quality in his music. He also used it to break the bond of unity, identity, and positive attitudes of peace amongst Negroids brought about by Latino and Negroid entertainers. Satan has used a synthesizer to produce synthetic abstract electronic sounds, which simulate instruments. Among the first such produced was called Trans, Across, Europe, Continent, Express, Sent Out With Speed. The meaning of these words should leave you in no doubt, this music has come directly from Europe, the seat of the beast. Modern technology has yielded yet another electronic device, the click system. Music that would otherwise be lifeless and rhythmless has the same characteristics as songs written by Negroids. Today, you hear high-pitched electronic sounds, which affect a portion of the brain, which controls the sympathetic nerves, which execute physiological effects through the parasympathetic nervous system tissue. This tissue controls is intending to reduce digestive secretions, speeding up the heart, and contracting blood vessels. This music also destroys the brain. The high shrilling sounds in music are also the language of the Satan, Jin. This is just one example of how the devil advocates music and destroys you at the same time. Along with the music, they have also masterminded hook lines that etch themselves into your brain, every time you turn on the radio. Words along with hypnotic music are repeated over and over again to the point of saturation and it's this repetition that is the key to obtaining your soul. Repetition voids the brain and works on your nervous system. By this I mean the brain becomes comfortable with hearing the same sound or beat. When you shake your leg you can get to a point where your leg is shaking on its own even after you try and stop it. 
In music, your body is in a trance. Trance has the same phonetics as heard in Trans Europe Express and in Transylvania, home of Dracula, whose bite places you under the spell. The spell, under which he can control you, is not only an effect on the dance floor, but the control that music has over you is an ever-present part of your everyday life. The average American sleeps with music quietly playing, the radio may be the media you wake up by, with the music blasting your senses away. While you get dressed, the music is playing again, while eating breakfast, and you listen to your favorite tape while you drive to work. On your job, music plays on the intercom system. Like any other drug, music is addictive and if you don't believe music can control your emotions, just listen to a soundtrack from a movie, without words. You can pick out the adventure scenes, or the love section or the sad tear-jerking sections just by listening to the music. Another practice of the Canaanite is the use of live recording artists to induce idol worship of musicians. Groups of unguided, confused youths take these singers as their role models and their heroes, and actually worship them. Some teens have been known to take their own lives at the death of the worship star. Such occurrences happened at the death of John Lennon. Because everyone refuses to accept that the existence of the Beatles phenomenon was a part of a well-orchestrated conspiracy. They were used as pawns as a means of social conditioning or social change. What do I mean by social change? Oftentimes when you have large groups of people, social change is unwanted. Thus, the Beatles were brought to the United States by Tavistock as a part of the Aquarian conspiracy. They would be used to aid in the brainwashing of large groups of people unbeknownst to them. It was not by chance that the Beatles just popped up on the scene. It was a carefully orchestrated plan to bring them to the United States in order to introduce a new and very effective destructive element. That destructive element being, the Beatles, or better yet the people would be forced to change against their will. They were trying to bring them back. And don't mention Elvis Presley. They won't let him or Marilyn Monroe die. They need their image in your head.